Doncaster. Well done. Sorry, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it is, uh, congratulations to this picture. Thank you. Scary, dude. It's a scary film. And I, I would Good. not lie to my friends out here, because <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a connoisseur of what I think are scary films. Uh -huh. I love scary films. This one filled me with so much creepy dread throughout the entire time <laughs> that afterwards I had to watch two and a half hours of Jackass the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clear the, <laughs> the brain. Wait, I mean, are you a fan of this kind of film? You know, I'm. Yeah, I do. I do love watching scary movies, but I'm terrible at it. I mean, I'm. I'm that guy when as soon as the music goes boom, 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 I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and I'm hoping my wife doesn't watch me. She's like hardcore. Even watching this movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw it, and I mean, I, I, I worked on it. We shot it. I knew everything that was happening, and still. I saw it on my own in a screening room here in Toronto, and then I, halfway through, I was like, I, like turned the music down, and I was like watching it, like, oh, God. Because uh, I don't know, there's something about it. And, and I would like to, to thank you for making this film because it also further um, uh, reinforces my decision not to have children. Because, <laughs> because, well, my current decision not to have children, because these kids are freaky in the beginning, yeah. too, right? Well, you know, kids are scary sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I have two, I know. Yeah. And I have one who's getting close to, to the teenage years, and that's, I'm sure that's going to be a bit of a mouthful. What, uh, what kind of, are you the father you thought you'd be? Uh, I don't know what I thought I'd be. <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, it's the, yeah. it is the best thing. You, you should, I mean, you think about it. Think about it, it's, George. It's just a lack of sleep alone. I'm just, I'm just, because I, I don't know, <laughs> there's something Greek yeah. here. Well, what gave it away, the Strombolopolis? <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's wonderful. You forgive them. But what's always. cool in this particular film, though, is this idea you get to explore being an an alternate parent in a way. You know, you're, yeah. you're the uncle. I mean, who... I actually, I uh, you know, I, I I play the father. The very beginning of the movie, we actually see the father of this yeah. children. He 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 dies. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting when I read the script because because you know I knew it was a. It's a ghost story, but it starts out almost like something else, yeah. like like one of those stories you read about in the paper, where dad, you know, loses his mind and does something horrible. Yeah. And so I play these twins, yeah. and he goes away, and then five years later, his brother Luke finds these kids, and and then of course you find out that there's a reason these kids survived five years in the middle of nowhere, and right. hence the title, Mama. <laughs> The sci-fi fantasy world can be so huge yeah. for someone's career. This uh, uh, oh. a moment George R.R. Martin was on the show. You know, the battle between good and evil, that's fine. I, the battle between good and evil is a universal theme, not only for fantasy, but for any fiction. Right. But my opinion has always been that the battle between good and evil is fought within the individual human heart. The fact that we, we do have good and evil in us, that we, we can be angels or we can be monsters. And how do we make these choices? How do we go through life? And that's the stuff I love to, to wrestle with. Do you feel that in the, in the show? Oh yeah, in Game of Thrones, absolutely. And what, one of the things I love about the show and about his writing is that, you know, he doesn't let us get away with our preconceived opinions of, of, of the various characters. Like, like I play Jamie Lannister and, and one of the reasons I got really excited about it when I read it the first time was that well, it kind of starts out with him shoving this kid out a window while he's being very intimate with his twin sister. Right. I mean, it's so dark and it's so twisted. But the dialogue, see, you're right, that in and of itself would be enough. Oh, and then, and then on top of that, he says, as he does it, the things, the things I do, I for, do love. for love. That's when it was like, wow, it's a different it's, show. Well, it's different, but it's also interesting, you know? <laughs> because when, when you see the show you, and you think about it, you kind of go, wow, all these relationships in this show are all more or less made out of political reasons. Mm -hmm. They arranged marriages. Oh no, there's one relationship which is just based on love. That's Jamie and Cersei. Right. Which is ironic because it's so wrong on so many levels. But it's all, then we're talking morals. That's a different story. And it's, yeah. It's a, you've had this nice kind of slow build in terms of a Western audience in a way, right? If you think about yeah. starting in film and, and, and you know, being a Danish actor, being in your country, making the transition to England, yeah. popping back and forth yeah. to build, then American television. Has it, has it felt like a slow build or does it feel like a whirlwind? It, I don't know what it feels like. I mean, it's 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 one of those things. I've, I mean, I've, this year it's 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 my twentieth year as an actor. Um, 
I've been working almost, I mean, I had 99 was a bad year. That was a horrible year. That's the year where I ended up finding myself in, in Cape Town, South Africa, doing a, a German sausage commercial because I was just, I was just broke. <laughs> and with the crazy American director, and I was stuck in a boat <laughs> and I couldn't get away. He was like, just eh, take a bite, goddammit, and smile. <laughs> um, that was the low point. But, but you know what? I, other than that, I've been able to make a living yeah. as an actor, and I'm just, just grateful. Well, you get to be on an impactful television show now, right? Well, this, yeah. Right, which does that. You, you make oh, films. I saw you meant this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Hello. Oh my god. Morning. You did not do that. <sighs> I look silly. Not now. It's a good team. Denmark was one of the first countries to adopt same-sex marriage, equal rights, in a way. Yeah. Like, it was, it was progressive in there, so, so that, that role is not a... No, 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 no. I, I didn't know you were gonna show that. That's, that's, that was interesting. <laughs> hey, I, I got to, to make out with Clive Owen. Wouldn't... That's not the worst. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what? I'm sure a lot of the audience wouldn't mind doing that. I mean, hey. I think the question that we, the audience has, and we all have, is did he bite your lip at all? No, but the funny thing is, uh, suddenly I, I understood that whole thing about stubble. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> That's painful. It, you work with Tom Cruise? That's the plan? That was an amazing experience. We shot that. It's called Oblivion, mm -hmm. and it, it comes out in April. And it's, uh, it's a sci-fi action movie. And, uh, yeah, Tom Cruise plays the lead. Uh, it's also got Morgan Freeman, Melissa Lee. It was, it's got a great cast. I mean, you, you work with someone like Tom Cruise, and you go, oh, my God, that's amazing. I mean, the effort, the work. The, I mean, he's the only... I mean, I wouldn't want to be his stunt guy, because you never get to work. You know? Yeah, he does his own his stuff. His stunt guy was in the corner, he's going, oh, this is fantastic, you know? <laughs> um, the, the idea of, of the part of the world you're from and the kind of output they have in television mm -hmm. is pretty impressive. You know, yeah. and I know Denmark is not at Scandinavian, but Scandinavia doesn't just mean all the countries. There's nuances within them. But just the kinds of film they make. You've got this beautiful Nordic angst there, yeah. which drives a lot of crime. Yeah, television. Know. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And then you read in, 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 other, in the next page, it says, the happiest country in the world. Right. <laughs> What's going on there? I see the Canadian film and television business can learn a lot from you guys, because you, you seem to figure out a way to build a, a, an identity that we haven't really nailed, certainly in the English part. Well, it must be Canada. difficult for you, because you have that neighbor. Yeah. And you share a language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tricky. Yeah, no, it really is, for sure. You're talking about Newfoundland, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, they are. <laughs> Speaking anyway. of language. Oh, yes, the classic. Rolkrol me flu. Now you say it. Rolkrol me flu. What did you say? Rolkrol. Who? No, Rolkrol. Rolkrol. That's not even real. What are you doing? Rolkrol. Okay, what? Is that the O? Is that what the O is? Like an O E. It's an U. Rolkrol. Okay. This is a test phrase, though, isn't that it? That is the test phrase for foreigners in Denmark. Okay, what does that, it mean? Well, it means we can get to laugh at someone, but it means uh, <laughs> porridge with cream. What? Like a porridge with cream. Oh, like a dessert kind of thing. Dessert, yeah. Say it again. <laughs> He's saying it. I love it. Congratu Congratulations on the film, man, and everything else. Good Thank to you. Thank you so much. Great Thank to you so much. Thank you.